Hello guys, Sherz Kamli here. Welcome na naman sa panibagong, sa panibagong video natin. At ngayon, pag-uusapan naman natin ay yung OnePlus Nord. At let's get into it. And before we start the review guys, may nag-comment sa isang post ko na pinapadala da, yung mga channel ko daw kaya daw ako nag-unbox kasi pinapadala pinapadalhan ako ng sponsors disclaimer lang guys lahat ng binibili ko ay ako bumibili hindi ako sponsored kaya wala akong pake kung anong sasabihin ko kasi ang kinakwento ko is my personal experience so hindi to dahil binigyan ako ay sinendan ako ng, ng phone nope at again inuulit ko ako ang bumibili lahat ng phones na nakikita nyo at lahat ng gamit na nakikita nyo sa channel na ito at ngayon let's go to the specs and let's go first to the introduction kung ano yung OnePlus Nord so this phone ay narelease sa Philippines uh, 3rd week of August pero na-open yung pre-order niya from August 19 to August something pero yun nga I think hindi ko alam kung kailan nakakuha yung pinakauna nung nirelease siya But globally, mas maaga siyang na-release. Medyo late sa Pilipinas. I don't know kung why, pero ayun siya. So, meron siyang 3 options available. Meron kong 3GB, 64GB internal memory storage. Meron kong 8GB, 128. At meron kong 12GB, 256. Nung unang uh, initial release nila sa pre-order, walang available na 12, 256. Pero ngayon, nakita ko na may post yung digital walker na pwede ka ulit mag-pre-order nung 12GB, 256. Pero iniisip ko rin, for a, for a mid-range phone, kailangan mo ba talaga ng 12GB, 256 But again, for the price naman siguro, I think you should consider it. And I think this is one of the brand new line din ni OnePlus. Kasi diba, ang phone nila is usually flagship killers. Yung OnePlus 8, 70, 7 Pro, and whatever, so on and so forth. Which is around 30,000 pesos plus. Pero ibahin natin itong phone na to kasi nasa 22,000 pesos lang siya. And kinoconsider ko din siya, or pwede siyang makonsider siguro, at least for me and dun sa mga ibang nakausap ko, na yung OnePlus is like the Apple of Android kasi it's really fast, it's really optimized, very optimized compared dun sa mga Android niya. And especially pag i-compare natin sa Galaxy Note 20, which is mamaya papakita ko sa inyo, ikakwento ko sa inyo yung experience ko with the OnePlus Nord. And moving to the specs, ngayon pag-usapan natin yung display niya. So yung display niya is maring fluid AMOLED. Siguro kaya siya tinawag na fluid AMOLED because of the 90Hz refresh rate. Meron siyang 6.44 inches screen at meron siyang resolution of 1080p by 2400. It supports HDR10+. Kaya kung managagamitin mo to for watching Netflix and high quality videos, makikita mo yung different shades from white to black. Kaya masarap siyang gamitin. And then meron siyang 90Hz refresh rate at of course his phone is flanked. Sabihin flanked or sandwiched by two Corning Gorilla Glass 5 and kind of disappointing kasi yung frame niya is plastic. Ano masasabi mo sa plastic phones, Aliana? Kinda sad. Kinda sad. Especially, di ba, it's OnePlus. I don't know if it's uh, if they're saving cost or they like to make the phone lighter but I don't think it's that much expensive naman to put a a metal frame on this phone. Now, let's move to the processor. So, this phone I know you guys might be disappointed that this phone uses a Snapdragon 765G with Adreno 620. Alam naman natin yung uh, 765 is a mid-range processor and not a flagship processor. Kahit 765G lang yung chipset na tong phone na to, from day-to-day -day use, simply Facebook, little games they, uh, here and there. Um, hindi ko naman nakita na parang ano, nai-stop yung yung phone because of the processor. I think that's mainly because of the software which is this phone uses the latest version of Android which is the Android 10 with the Oxygen OS. Kaya maganda tong phone na to siguro kasi you get sure updates for the next 2 to 4 years. Kasi kung alam naman natin yung Android especially with Samsung <laughs> na after 2 years you don't really get the latest versions anymore. Siguro patch na lang ng mga security updates pero you won't be updated to the latest version of Android. So, I'm not sure kung ganun pa rin sa Samsung, but with my experience with the previous phones, ganun. Siguro the only companies na you can trust that they will give you software updates for years to come is Google, which is the Pixel phones, OnePlus, and iPhone. And for the rest, not sure. Maybe Motorola din, pero they're not that sikat anymore compared to these phones. And right now, let's move to the camera. So, itong phone na to merong 1, 2, 3, 4. Meron siyang 4 camera, meron siyang 48 megapixel main shooter, meron siyang 8 megapixel ultra wide, meron siyang 5 megapixel depth of field camera, at meron siyang 2 megapixel f2.4. 
meron siyang front camera na 32 megapixel and 8 megapixel. I don't know guys, pixels are not everything. So hindi porket malaki yung pixels would result to amazing pictures kasi I'm really disappointed with the picture quality that comes from this phone kasi you get these amazing numbers on the cameras pero yung result, the colors is kind of off as compared to other prices or compared to sa mga cellphones sa katulad niya ng presyo. Example, F2 Pro. And this phone supports 4K 3060 at dun sa 1080p, it supports up to 240 frames per second. So makakuha mo yung mga magandang slow motion. And then unfortunately, this video wala siyang optical image stabilization kasi meron lang siyang electric image stabilization which is kind of okay but nothing beats an optical. Tapos samahan mo pa ng EIS, edi sana sobrang ganda nung ano. Don't worry guys, uh, look at these pictures and videos na ipapakita ko ngayon. So after seeing those pictures and videos, you guys decide kung bakit I'm kind of disappointed with the camera, especially at this price point. Especially at this price point and especially at this category kasi medyo tight tong category na to when it comes to the specs. So this phone comes in two colors, mention gray onyx and then blue marble and this phone is the blue marble. And then extra features, not extra but something to note. So this phone uses a USB-C with UFS 2.1, may siyang single firing speaker, may siyang fingerprint scanner which is amazingly fast. Kahit i-compare ko pa siya sa Galaxy Note 20 kasi yung Galaxy Note 20 Ultra, hindi ko alam kung bakit ganon pero ang bagal niyang gamitin at napakakailangan super sakto dun sa bilog para ma-activate mo. Considering that you can buy 3 OnePlus Nord with this phone, hindi ba kayang gawin ng Samsung na i-optimize yung fingerprint? Kind of disappointed kasi you're pay paying a premium to the Galaxy Note 20 at super bagal. Not super bagal but at least compared to the OnePlus Nord which is like a third of the price, di ba? This phone has a 4,115 mAh battery with warp charging. First time kung gumamit ng warp charging at grabe. Makunat na yung battery niya. Makunat na yung battery niya. Mabilis pang mag-charge. Kaya this phone is easily a one-day phone. Siguro kahit iwan mo lang 10 minutes, 5 minutes, you'll be good for the day. I mean, pag nalobat ka, mafufull agad. Kasi based on their ad uh, advertising, you get 70% in 30 minutes. So, kung nalobat ka, then charge mo after 30 minutes, you get 70%. Meron ka pang kalahating araw to use the phone. And right now, let's talk about my personal experience. First, let's go to the cons. First is the price. Why price? I know this phone is like, I don't know, 22,000, 25,000 pesos only. But considering na yung competition, example is Poco F2 Pro, which is around 24,000, 25,000, depending on where you'll get it. And then, if you consider the new iPhone SE, which uses the processor and the cameras of the iPhone 10, I think, and the processor of the iPhone 11 Pro Max, at 26,000 pesos, you kind of consider na parang if you're gonna use the phone for more than uh, more than two years, and you like updates and gusto mo yung maritain yung value ng phone mo. Of course, everyone knows the iPhone is a choice, kasi you get software updates for I don't know six years. One plus you get four years maybe. Pero if you want to retain the value, alam naman natin na iPhone ang pinaka nagre-retain ng value. Do you agree, Aliana? And with iPhone, you kind of still become rel ano mo, relevant ka pa din for years to come kahit, kahit na outdated yung phone mo, but you're still cool. When... Merong ganong factor ng iPhone eh, no? Na even though it's an old phone, you get that vibe na hindi naman to luma. But with Android, just sobrang bilis ng pace ng Android, you kind of feel left out kahit isang taon ka lang or two years. Parang ganon, yeah. Kaya... The budget of 22,000 pesos is kind of tough because you have many options, especially you have options from Oppo, from Vivo, na meron mga good specs, yung Red Nubia, and then Black Shark, kaya yun. Next is the processor. Uh, kind of disappointed nga rin. I, I'm sure you guys are also disappointed that OnePlus use a mid-range processor instead of the Qualcomm 865 dito sa phone na to. But believe me when I say this, hindi mo mararamdaman yung 
yung processor na yun from day to day use in the, i don't know kung kailan mo gagamitin yung that much power kasi with the great optimization of the phone the great software siguro yun yung isang gusto gustong ko is a software even though with a 765 it's an amazing phone next is the cameras ayoko na magsabi pa iba sa cameras but i'm hindi ako satisfied sa camera niya they could have done a better job with the cameras of OnePlus Nord. May potential siya, sayang. And then, isang ayaw ko rin dito, dito, dito sa phone na to is the look ng phone. Hindi, hindi ako fan ng double camera punch. Diba? Ikaw, you like it? I don't like it as well. Parang medyo uh, intrusive siya. As compared sana, they could either use a pop-up or a single punch kasi, I don't know, yung ibang phone naman ganun. Kaya, I don't like the two. Even Samsung ditched the design, so bakit sinunod? Ba't gumawa pa si OnePlus ng ganun, di ba? Right now, let's go to what I liked about this phone. First, is the battery life is amazing. The charging speed is amazing, kaya easy one-day phone, easy even two-day phone. Or baka you just find yourself just plugging it, just pag umupo ka, plug mo, din alis ka, and maybe you don't need to really worry about your battery. Next is the screen refresh rate. Once you go 90 hertz, 120 hertz, parang ayaw mo na bumalik sa 60 hertz. Kasi even the, my iPhone 11 Pro Max looks low when compared to the OnePlus Nord. OS is fast, really fast, really customizable. Nakakatawa siya as compared sa iOS na, you know, I've been an iOS user as I mentioned in previous video. Kaya nakakatawa yung OS ng OnePlus Nord. So this phone is amazing for gaming. Kaya even with the processor and with the Adreno 620. And what I really like isa pa, even though I don't like the look of the front screen, is it uses a flat screen. Kasi ayoko ng edge phone. Kasi medyo annoying siya, di ba? Parang ang hirap hawakan, but flat screen, pwede mo siyang hawakan like a normal phone and you won't be really bothered by the, you know, by the sides. Kaya, yun. So basically, that's it guys for this video. Don't forget to click like, comment, subscribe. And I'll see you guys on the next. Um, bumili ako nung Oppo X, ano, uh, not Oppo, yung Poco X3, which I think is the budget, ano, uh, budget, kinda almost mid-range killer. And I'll see you guys on the next.